ladies and gentlemen, it's Culture Corp. Chelsea move from one extreme to another as we face a side we haven't beaten since the Champions League final back in 2021. Our record against Crystal Palace moves to 14 consecutive wins in all competitions after Monday's win, but our record against City looks quite the opposite. Six consecutive defeats were met with an absolutely explosive 4-4 draw back in November arguably one of, if not the games of the season. It's it's a result nobody saw coming. However, uh, coming into this game, the predictions are more or less the same as they were prior to the last. City are a side reborn as ever at this stage of the season. We see it time and time again. Season after season, we see them uh, look a little bit shaky or, or if not shaky, a little bit unlike themselves, which is becoming the norm as of lately. And then you have, uh, in, in this season's case, De Bruyne return um, and back and seemingly better than ever. And uh, with City sitting on an 11-game win streak and 14-game unbeaten streak, it's unlikely that this side, a team that has struggled against a weakened Palace side just five days ago could come away with anything less than an absolute beating. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not hopeful. I'm really not hopeful that Chelsea can come away with anything here, but, you know, crazy things do happen. The Blues have won uh, six and lost six in uh, our 12 top flight matches since drawing 4-4 with Manchester City uh, on the 12th of November. At the Etihad specifically... Uh, Chelsea haven't seen a win there since that run under Thomas Tuchel where he seemingly had Pep's number. We beat them uh, in the league and then went on to obviously win the Champions League um, a couple of months later or a couple of weeks later. A late winner from Marcus Alonso in the 90th minute. Uh, it seems like an eternity ago uh, as a Chelsea fan. Before then, it was that game. Yes, and I don't even have to say what game it was, but I'm going to anyway. But it was that game, 3-1 in our Premier League winning season back in 2016. A Cahill own goal um, of, of just uh, catastrophic <laughs> proportions. The slice, uh, it, it was one of the, uh, it was up there as one of the, the, the best own goals you'll ever see. Uh, followed by a Diego Costa, Willian and Hazard threesome uh, was capped off with two red cards from Aguero and Fernandinho, uh, all spar uh, sparking off from uh, David uh, David um, David Luiz getting absolutely battered uh, by Aguero and then Fernandinho throwing Cesc Fabregas over the, uh, the you know the, the the barricade and all that <laughs> through the barricade what is this uh, WrestleMania is for uh, a, a good few months yet shit house Chelsea at its finest form wise Chelsea unpredictable as ever unpredictable as ever we we seemed down and out against palace the the streak again not to go back to it but the streak seemed to be over um but brought it back from the death um and uh, against the top six it's a brighter season than last uh but still nothing to brag about uh, besides a win against Tottenham. That win against Spurs is our only away league victory this season against a side that are currently top, or, or sorry, above us in the table. So coming into the game, um, they're the only side um, away from home that we've played, that we've beaten, who were above us in the table on the day. Whether the previous victory uh, can spur us on, excuse the pun, uh, these players uh, on... Uh, it's one question. That is one question. Whether or not the, a draw or a victory against this City side is possible in any shape or fashion is another one entirely. Injuries, once again, have struck the Blues. Thiago Silva is the newest to the list. Malo Gusto and Levi Colwell are fit, despite minor uh, issues on uh, Monday's win. Uh, uh, but Carney Chukameka, he's back for one game or so and uh, is now absent after he twisted his ankle. Robert Sanchez is set to return, much to the dismay of pretty much every single Chelsea fan, uh, to the matchday squad after missing two months with a knee problem. 
And I'm telling you right now, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, it's a call for a sacking just for that alone. If he starts him for, um, you know, in favor of Petrovic, I'm, st I'm still not back on board. I don't think many of us are in terms of uh, Pochettino in or Pochettino out, despite our form over the last two games, 3-1 in both. The spotlight is still very much on Pochettino to make the right decisions, to get the right results and to get this team moving in the right direction. Now, that does mean that this game, it, does, it, it doesn't. This game doesn't bear any meaning um, on his future necessarily. If we get hammered, we get hammered, but it's not going to get him sacked unless it's, you know, like an 8-0 or something like that. I mean, crazier things have happened. Let's just not even give that a, a, a second thought. Uh, but you get what I'm saying. If he starts Sanchez over Petrovic at the first chance possible, what precedent does that set out for a talent like Petrovic, who on merit, on merit, has earned his reputation as Chelsea's new and improved number one? Quite frankly, the most comfortable I've been with someone in goal since I can remember. The, the, I'm trying to think. Mendy, maybe. Kepo, never really. But Mendy, I would argue, and in before then, it was, it's been a while, isn't it? It's the same at both ends, striking and, and goalkeeping. Just can't get them, can't get them sorted. It, it just cannot happen. It just cannot happen. It isn't fair on him. Sanchez was our automatic number one based on experience and age, quite frankly. But now uh, we've had a comparison. We've seen just how much better Petrovic has proven to be in goal. Uh, it would be criminal to drop him. Jack Grealish is ruled out after being uh, withdrawn against Copenhagen with a muscle problem. Bernardo Silva was hurt by a heavy tackle in the same game, but will be assessed uh, before the game, while uh, Vardy L remains out with an ankle injury. Former Chelsea player Mateo Kovacic and his counterpart Sergio Gomez uh, come back into contention after resuming training. The spotlight isn't on just Pochettino. In fact, it is more so on, uh, you know, someone in particular, maybe even one else. Um, but in this game, the spotlight is on Cole Palmer and partly on uh, Raheem Sterling. But ultimately, it's on Cole Palmer, especially following his last game against them. 16 goals and assists in the league this season in 21 appearances. It makes for good viewing and certainly gets you uh, hoping that he can replicate his performance back in November at the bridge both of them, for that matter. In fact, both Raheem Sterling and Cole Palmer scored for Chelsea against former club Manchester City in November's reverse fixture. No player to have previously played for Manchester City in the Premier League has scored a home and away against them in a single season. So there's something for either of them to look towards for a bit more motiva motivation <laughs> coming into this game. Predictions wise, I mean, let's be real. The reverse fixture was a mad one. It was a bit of a mad one. Certainly got us going. Uh, but if we're being real here, much like I probably said all of this before the last game, uh, any belief that we can come away with um, anything other than a loss uh, here would be outrageous. It would be. And that's not me being pessimistic or negative. We've had two wins in a row that are three one. But let's be let's be honest. Let's be honest. This is one of the best teams in the world that we're coming up against here. There's no, no two ways about it. Is it possible? Of course, anything is possible in the Premier League. Will it happen? We'll see. For me, I, it pains me to say, but I'm going 3-0 Man City. Um, I, I don't even see a scoring. Maybe, maybe one. But if that, nothing more. I hope to be proven wrong. That said, if we do get a result, it only strengthens the fact that we are without a shadow of a doubt the most unpredictable side in the world of football right now.